Great. OK, well, welcome to this webinar on creativity. I'm calling it natural creativity because it is, I believe, something that we all have. It's a natural faculty of human beings. And we may kid ourselves sometimes that uh, we don't have it or we're not very creative, but I'm hoping that um, you won't believe that at the end of this webinar. So I'm going to, we're going to talk a bit about creativity, what it is, um, what you can, what might might stop you from using your natural creativity. Um, we'll talk a little bit about some creativity strategies whereby you can get more creative. And then I want to tell you about an initiative I'm running um, that will get you even more creative, I hope. So I see you've always all put your um, uh, names and countries. How about, I don't know, how many coaches are there? Um, coaches, just, just put in what you do. Uh, coaches, maybe trainers, consultants, um, entrepreneurs, uh, therapists, doctors. I don't know who's interested. Life coach, coaches, okay. I'm guessing that most of you will be coaches. Uh, of one sort or another, business coach, life coach, career coach, mental performance, great, okay, psychologist, yeah, okay, coach trainee, <laughs> internal coach, mentor, yeah, okay, that's that's great, and, and I would imagine that um, a good deal of you are entrepreneurs in the sense that you run your own business, because as coaches, that's what we tend to do. And we tend to run our own business, we tend to get clients, we do all our own marketing. So we are virtually a jack of all trades. And of course, we're master at coaching and maybe some others, but um, there may be other things that we need a bit of help about. So let's move. Creativity. So we're going to be going for about all together about an hour. I'm hoping to be fairly punctual here. Um, there should be a little time for questions at the end. If you have any questions, write them uh, in the question box or at the end, you'll be able to ask them live. If we have time, I can uh, switch on your mic. OK, so creativity, we all want it. And but how do we get it? Well, that's really the wrong question because it's not an it. Creativity is not an it. We don't want to be misled by language and thinking that we can actually get this something. So it's an abstract noun. It's really a process. So it's not a case of how do we get it, but it's a case of what can we do to run this creativity process, as it were, to become creative, to make it a verb instead of a noun, uh, which is going to mean putting the right pieces in place and removing the obstacles. So I'm hoping to do a bit of both here to put the right pieces in place, remove the obstacles, and then the engine will run. No problem. OK, so first of all, let's um, dispel a couple of myths. Um, there's a kind of myth of creative genius whereby only certain people are creative. Um, and this picture here, you may be interested to know, I asked uh, one of the AI um, bots called Midjourney to produce uh, a picture. I, I fed in a prompt that said, uh, make a picture of a creative genius. <laughs> and this is what they came up with. And I thought that was interesting. Um, it's a bit of a cliche, isn't it? It's an elderly guy and he's got glasses on. And he's got a, a desk full of um, stuff, various stuff. So it is a cliche. And it's very interesting what's happening with AI at the moment. But to some extent, and certainly with pictures, um, because they're trained on so many millions of, of existing pictures, they do tend to come up with cliches. So I'm not worried about, at the moment anyway, uh, AI displacing um, any creative, really creative activity of human beings. And I've also got to say that creativity is going to very fast become the most important talent, faculty, 
um, gift, whatever you want to call it, that we can have. Because AI is very good at copying other things, but it cannot produce um, a real unique human being because human beings are unique. They cannot be replicated. So that's, uh, but here's a, a real human being who was very creative. So I'm, I'm just interested now from you guys, what do you see as some of those genius innovations that have changed our lives over the last 50, 100 years? Yeah? I guess there'll be a high concentration of them in the last <laughs> maybe 20 or 30. But if you think back, what, what, do you, what do we take for granted now that was a creative innovation of its time? But now, the internet, absolutely. Angelique, yep, I remember when that started. Domestic boiler. Ah, okay. Interesting. Good. What else we got? What are those, what are those real incredible inventions that uh, have changed lives? Light bulb, yeah. Uh, let's say electricity, certainly. The wheel, yes, we're going back a bit, but absolutely. Steam engine, yeah, soda. <laughs> Jet engine too, of course. Um, the plow. <laughs> Oh, here we go. AI, yes, definitely. TV, yes. iPhone, air flights, yeah. Um, electric cars, sure. Internet again, cars, computers, yeah. School, <laughs> IA, maybe that's AI. Um, mobile phones, yeah, absolutely. I, I would completely agree. Um, and of course, all of those those that you've come up with um, are they're not just one person sitting at their desk and then it all happens it may have started with one but usually it's it's a it's a number of people it's a team it's people taking something and incrementally improving it like the jet engine like like the iphone where all the pieces were in place it's just that they hadn't been combined in that particular way and of course, evolution, which has come up with some amazing things, um, has taken a long, long time to do so. So don't um, devalue the fact that uh, you can take, you know, incremental change over time can produce some wonderful things. Ah, antibiotics we've got. OK, yep. I, I was just thinking of, of some more mundane ones, which uh, is, are quite interesting. And I just wanted to share with you that came to mind. First one there on the left, um, quite difficult to, to, to think, but uh, that's supposed to be mold, supposed to be that kind of mold fungus thing that grows in wet places of your kitchen if you're unlucky. And this goes back to, oh, I think 1920s, 1930s. Um, Alexander Fleming was growing bacteria in his laboratory and in petri dishes, those glass dishes with nice nutrients in them that bacteria so love. And one of the petri dishes, the bacteria didn't grow. Instead, this mold grew. Now, it would be very easy for him to say, that's a mistake, let's chuck out the petri dish, that experiment didn't work. But he got interested, he got curious in why this mold was growing when it should be bacteria. And of course, that mold was penicillin. And penicillin, now, it was the first antibiotic and, and the basis of all the others. And that's absolutely one medical um, invention, as it were, or medical practice that's revolutionized our health and, and medicine. Uh, people would die of infections before that. And it was like a miracle drug. Take it penicillin. Instead of dying, you got better in a few days. Amazing. Second one along um, is phenol or carbolic acid and this this goes back to oh middle of about 1850 or so when people didn't know the germs they didn't know anything about germs they had other theories about disease and there were many operations 
where people would die of post-operative infections. Uh, the, there's the old saying, the operation was successful, but the patient died. And this was a comment on exactly that. The operation went well from the surgeon's point of view, but and they contracted, an, as we know, an infection and, um, and then would die of that afterwards. And it was uh, Joseph Lister that first revolutionized medicine, uh, or he was one of those that started to use a spray of carbolic acid. And this cut post-operative death oh, by about a third or a quarter. It, it was remarkable and immediate. And there was a good deal of resistance to that at first. People said, you shouldn't spray these chemicals around. It takes too much time. People will bleed to death. And anyway, uh, disease is spread by miasma vapors in the air, because they didn't really know. Uh, and about the same time, Pasteur was formulating his germ theory. So it all came together. So there's another, so another invention that um, we don't think about very much, but um, well, rather important. It occurred to me when I was at the dentist the other day. Third one, biros, yeah? Um, invented by a Hungarian about 90 years ago called Laszlo Biro. <laughs> and he, he worked in printing and uh, he, wanted a, he wanted a pen that you could write with, like a fountain pen, that didn't leak ink. And he was, uh, I guess, a precursor of Prince Charles Rage, our, our now new king, who was widely reported to get extremely annoyed with uh, his fountain pen, because royals have to use fountain pens to find things, uh, when it leaked. And this was the problem, you know, 90 years ago, they didn't have biros. And so Biro um, adapted a pen to use the thicker ink that was used uh, to print newspapers, but he had to do a special kind of rotating ball at the top. Uh, and it worked, but it didn't really get very far until uh, it was taken over by the English um, government uh, in the 1940s because they needed a pen for their um, pilots on the aircraft to write things when they were very high because you know when you're in a, an airplane and the pressure isn't the same fountain pens leak like crazy which you'll know if you've ever taken a, a fountain pen onto an airplane a commercial flight so they they uh, they found these biros extremely useful for their pilots and of course since then it's it's caught on a lot so now only royals use fountain pens and then finally, um, on the right, we have Velcro. Velcro that uh, helps clothes stick together and uh, kind of revolutionized the fashion industry, I guess. And that came by accident, not from anyone called Velcro, but from a Swiss engineer, whose name I think was Mestral. And he used to go out in the woods with his dog. And uh, when he came back, he found all these kind of burrs from the trees stuck to the dog's fur and stuck to his clothes and instead of going what a nuisance uh, he got interested and thought what is it that lets them stick like that and he did some research and looked into it and started to, to uh, develop something that could be used and the result is velcro <laughs> so there's all these little things that uh, are interesting especially the stories behind them and there are other things as well um, I was I don't know who came up with the idea of putting little wheels on the bottom of suitcases, but that has changed my life being a, a regular traveler. I don't know why it wasn't done before. There was just some things you think, why did nobody think of that before? And even some of the, um, the important scientific discoveries um, were, were kind of accidents in a way, because if we, if, if we go back to someone like um, Pavlov, Ivan Pavlov and his dogs, who I'm sure you've heard of, um, he did, his experiments gave rise to conditioned reflexes, whereby dogs would salivate if you rang a bell at the same time of food, and then they'll still salivate if you rang the bell, but didn't give them any food because they were conditioned. But Pavlov wasn't interested in that at the start. Pavlov was, got his Nobel Prize for actually doing research into dog's digestive systems and that was just a little uh, slip up you know a, a little extra piece of experiment that he thought oh that's interesting I wonder if we should uh, pursue that 
so that you know it's not it's not like somebody sits down at a desk and thinks deeply and comes up with wonderful ideas it's very often it's accidents it's mistakes it's being curious about something to see why did this happen where could this lead maybe it's not a mistake maybe it's something really good but in another track so this is the this is the kind of ideas that that these and other examples made me think about in terms of creativity we need a mindset we need a you know to be curious and to be able to observe what's happening and not to immediately label things as mistakes we need application you know we, we need to keep going at it none of these things happened overnight they needed work to bring them to a place where they could actually be useful to a number of people they need is a stimulation some kind of stimulation from somewhere very often from the people they were with and they certainly needed encouragement what's that story about thomas edison um, invention of the light bulb uh, he by all account i don't know the story exactly but it, he he did several hundred attempts to make a light bulb and um, none of them worked and then in the end one did work and uh, when someone tasked him about this he said well that's okay those other 900 were i was just discovering ways that didn't produce light and they were extremely useful because it just uh, eliminated another way and so i could carry on and find the right one but you need encouragement from other people definitely and of course the results in the end can be life-changing so i think that all of those things go together we're going to go more into the mindset in this webinar but it's worth remembering we need all of them so creativity is something new certainly but it's made from elements taken from another context. So you're always putting things together that already existed usually. And I like that saying from Pablo Picasso. He says, good artists borrow, great artists steal. <laughs> so good artists borrow because they think in terms of this belongs to somebody else. I'm just borrowing it and it still belongs to somebody else. But great artists take something, they incorporate it into their work so much, so integrated, it becomes so much of them that it becomes part of them. You know, you think about the the, I, the iPad or the iPod or the iPhone, all of those things were existing, but um, that's what survived, that particular configuration. And it's got to fit perfectly into a new context. In other words, it's got to be useful. You can We can invent all sorts of weird and wonderful things, um, and there are plenty of examples, and if nobody wants them, they just don't go anywhere. Okay. So then, if you take the idea that we are all creative naturally, I mean, you've only got to watch young children for a start to see what sort of things they get up to. So, what stops us? And I think that we gradually, um, these things come over the years um, from growing up becoming mature going to school of course i read somewhere that um young children age four or five they ask about 100 questions a day and by the time we reach the age of about 20 it's down to about 10. now <laughs> questions of course are a way of getting information they're a way of saying um i don't know about this and tell me so more questions so here's some of the the things that might stop us these kind of mental models and by a mental model i mean a belief an idea an assumption that we've picked up somewhere very often from our upbringing um, that kind of stops us from trying something that could work and one of those first one is that there's one right way to do it you know there's only one right way and it, it could be really difficult and what's more i must find it i've got to find it and I think, first of all, one very practical thing about this is that any time somebody says to you a must or a should or a shouldn't or a mustn't, what's called in language modal operators, these are creativity killers. The moment you start saying to yourself, I must get this right, I must find the right way, 
it's like an immediate pressure that makes it very difficult to become creative which needs you know the brain to be in a more free and fluid state so careful about that secondly it must be perfect no mistakes well you know it depends how you think about a mistake really a mistake uh in one direction can be something creative in another as as we know and of course in in business there's something called a minimum viable product or mvp and most of the really big companies now they started with an mvp you know google at the beginning amazon at the beginning virgin at the beginning all of these companies they had something wasn't that great but they put it out there straight away knowing that it wasn't perfect but also hoping that the feedback and the use and time it would get better and better and that applies also of course uh, in a slightly different way to writers um, as a writer of books myself and writing a lot of stuff and i'm often asked about that and one of the things that a writer needs to do is to be willing to put down complete garbage as a first draft to get something out there once it's out there you can start playing with it and you can start saying oh this isn't very good we can just tweak this up and this would fit better here and we move around this take this out put that in and then first draft is very much better and then second draft and third draft and so we go so perfection is um unattainable and it's the enemy of the good and the enemy of the very good and the enemy of the absolutely wonderful because in a sense the perfect never arrives because as human beings we are always looking for perfection and it drives us on but we never really find it there's always another step third idea that can stop us is i don't have time well you don't need you know a large amount of time to be creative how long does it take to get a good idea half a second it may take a long time to develop that idea but actually that first idea eh, maybe a second or two and then it's there and then you can write it down or just put it to one side and you can develop it another time so there is time another thing that stops us only special people are creative well we're all special we can all learn to be naturally talented we're all unique our brain is naturally creative our brain creates the world as you look round and as you listen from i don't know what nobody quite knows what it, it takes in the sense sensory data from our senses and then it projects out this wonderful multi-dimensional colorful loud world that's what brains do they create stuff that's what we do all the time creativity is not making something completely new it doesn't have to be completely new it's usually a, a different combination of things and it's got to be useful and finally um allied to you can't have you, you must be perfect people don't like ambiguity they don't like uncertainty um we hear a lot about vuca don't we v-u-c-a the age of vuca volat volatility uncertainty complexity and ambiguity these are the four horsemen that uh, are running through our business at the moment but if you think about it in a sense those are exactly the elements that you want in order to be creative now you don't want everything like that you don't want the whole world to go topsy-turvy but you need some of that you need some uncertainty you need some ambiguity because we tend to be a bit lazy you know when things are okay and quite comfortable we're not very not very interested in, in doing anything else finally another idea that stops us well what works in the past is good enough well maybe it was um but the future is not the past and the future is going to be different from the past maybe by a lot maybe by a little but it's going to be different so what worked in the past is great but how about something else 
And here I put Leonardo da Vinci. Now, Leonardo da Vinci, you're probably familiar with his name, um, Renaissance uh, inventor and painter. And he had this idea, he, he, the way that he approached things would be, he was often asked by his patrons to, uh, for an invention or you know, a painting or some idea or some way to do something. And he would always aim to come up with three different ways to do it that worked. And then he would take the one that, that worked best for him or he'd present all three to his patrons. And I think that's a very good strategy because what comes up first is usually going to be the one that's based on your um, habitual thinking. And it, you know, it may be fine, that's okay. But then you want to push yourself, push yourself a bit more. How else could I do this? It's like a muscle, you know, you've got to push that creative muscle. Don't be satisfied with the first answer. And as coaches, don't be satisfied with the first answer. You know, some, some clients will, uh, you ask them a question, they will immediately answer it in, in a very straightforward, you know, and, and fluent way. But sometimes this is the habitual thinking that's coming out. It's how they're thinking, and that's precisely what isn't working, and that's precisely why they're coming to a coach. So it's good for us coaches to very often go, okay, well, I understand that. Now, give me another way. Give me your best thinking on this. What else could it be? So there's another thing that you can think about, another practical way we can get into this. Three different ways. As they say, if you've only got one way, well, you're kind of... Uh, you're stuck, you're compelled to use it. If you've got two ways, well, you're in a dilemma. You know, should I do this? Should I do that? If you've got three ways, then you have choice. So implicit in what I'm saying is that creativity is actually about inhibition and actually about stopping uh, habitual thinking and stopping distractions. And then it can naturally flow. So you stop the limiting mental models that might be stopping it. You stop the distractions and the habitual thinking. And what flows is creativity. And this is precisely how the brain works. The seat of our great intelligence, the CEO of the brain, the uh, executive functions up in the prefrontal cortex, work mostly through inhibition. In other words, they stop other things from happening. Otherwise, your brain would be awash with everything would be distracting. And when this doesn't work so well, you get things like ADHD, for example, where things that don't normally distract people do distract certain people because the inhibition of the prefrontal cortex um, isn't working as well as it could. And this is why in ADHD there are drugs in order to help with that and other practices. So what we want to do is to inhibit, first of all, external things like external distractions. So, you know, you want to be in a, a place that you like, that anchors you for ease and creativity, whatever that might be, whether it's loud rock music or soft Mozart or complete silence or bird song, as I have. Um, if you listen very carefully to at the back of the microphone, you should hear some bird song there. I find that very nice. Um, so, you know, your environment, um, pay attention to your environment, give yourself, um, make it the best that you possibly can because you deserve it. And then you have these, those internal, distractions. Um, so you want to be comfortable. You don't want to be anxious. Um, you don't want to be sleepy. You don't want to be hungry or thirsty. You know? these, these, this sounds kind of obvious and trite, but um, it matters because our brain is part of our body and our brain works well when our body works well. And in particular, getting enough sleep is really, really important to help the brain work in the best possible way because REM sleep consolidates the memories, puts things together in different ways. And 
very often I have, and I'm sure you have at one stage, woken up in the middle of the night or in the morning with an idea. You don't know where it came from, but it's an interesting one. And then we want to inhibit those habits of thinking, and those are the most difficult to inhibit because they're habits, right? Habits are what we do without thinking. So it's kind of a paradox to say you've got to stop thinking the things that you think without thinking. It just means being aware, having a, having a little bit of reflection. So I want to just say um, a few things about how we might tackle this in terms of strategy. And the first one is study something new and interesting. I'm sure that you all have something that you've thought, I'd really like to, to study that, I'd really like to do that. But I haven't got time, you know, uh, another time, when I retire, in my holidays, whenever it might be. And somehow you never get around to it. And it's such a shame. So what I would say, what I say to all my clients as well, is find something like that and start studying it. Give it a month. You know, I'm not talking about trying to be a world expert in it, but just go into it, dip your toe into it. See what it's like. Um, I've I tried archery. Well, archery was great, taught me a lot. Um, I did a little bit of Japanese history. That was fascinating. Also Irish history. Things that you 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 know they're they're not directly uh, associated with your work and your business, but you would be surprised, or maybe you wouldn't, that. When you study these things and take a different sort of perspective and a different way of thinking, that different perspective and way of thinking transfers itself across to your business. And, you know, I start thinking about my coaching in terms of archery. What's it like the, the, if, if I was a, a coach for, in archery? Or, or what can Japanese history teach me about thinking and how people think? And, how might that be helpful in my business? Now, you're not trying to do that deliberately, but it will come. So definitely, I would say do that. Second, we need new input. So this is my way of saying confuse the algorithms and break free as far as you can from your favorite social media. Because social media, as we know, is um, it's an amplification, it's an echo chamber of what we already believe and what, what, the way that we already think. So we tend to join in groups of people who think like us. And that's fine, and it's great, and it's fun. And I'm not saying don't do that. It's just that when you do that, you will be surrounded then by people who think in much the same way. So you'll miss the challenge that comes from people that don't think in the same way. You may think they're wrong, you may think they're crazy, but you still need the challenge. So I would say um, join a group, a uh, social media group, of something that you know nothing about or some, something that you, you don't agree with very much, something that seems a bit strange to you or some uh, strange hobby that, that you, know, you can't believe that somebody does this. Join the group, see what they're talking about. And this frees us from the echo chamber of social media. Social media is great for many things, but it really narrows us down in other ways. And of course, we also know that it amplifies and pushes the more extreme elements of anything. So any group is going to tend towards the most extreme because social media is about getting people's attention and nothing gets people's attention better than extreme viewpoints and threats and fear because fear will hijack your amygdala in the brain and you pay attention to it. Whatever you're doing, if there's a threat, your attention is immediately diverted. So that's, uh, I would say, do that. That is another picture from Mid Journey, where I fed in a prompt saying uh, a sad, confused uh, AI. 
that was the prompt for that sad confused AI that's what he came up with and finally one way we can kind of trick our habitual thinking is to put in something random so in the extreme it would be like uh, what some people do um you get a book uh, a book that you like uh, it could be you know the bible or the quran or the i ching or any any book that you that you fancy um poems of rumi something like that then you pick a, a number at random which will be the page number and then you pick a, another number at random which is going to be the line number and then you open the book and you look at that page on that line and you read whatever's there and then you think to yourself how might that apply to the problem i have or the decision that i'm trying to make or the, the issue that i'm dealing with at the moment so you are necessarily stopping your habitual thinking and you are going somewhere random and our brain is so wonderful and so good at making at seeing patterns that i guarantee it will see something there'll be something there. and this is the basis of all of those sort of things like I Ching or astrology or anything like that where you're basically getting some kind of random element and then seeing how it fits in with your life at the moment um for those of you that know i don't know if any of you know there's a wonderful book called the dice man by luke reinhardt and that's about a, a therapist that decides for a reason i can't remember that uh, his life is boring and therefore he is going to allow the dice to decide whatever he does and uh whenever he has a decision to make he decides in advance uh what he's going to do depending on the throw of the dice then he throws the dice and then he carries out the decision based on what the number came up in the dice and that he's decided in advance would be that number it's a, a hilarious book and i thoroughly recommend it okay so again back here we've been looking at mindset of curiosity of being interested in mistakes You've got to show up you've got to engage you've got to do the work you need good feedback you need good input you need community you need support and celebrations and that will lead to results you make a difference you influence others maybe change the world who knows so just interested i've talked a fair bit um what's caught your attention so far what's been interesting for you so far if you just put in the chat what ideas what uh, concepts so far that i've been talking about has uh, struck your interest confuse the algorithm right further questions habitual answer yep starting something new yeah yeah minimum viable product okay yep absolutely anyone can be creative everyone is creative something new yep unconscious yes yes Coaching and creativity, reframing questions. Yep. Good. Okay. Mental models, old thought patterns. Yep. Old thought patterns were okay in the past, but they may not be so good in the future. And satisfy comments on social media. Yeah, good. Okay. Excellent. Okay good well um questions yeah <laughs> three solutions yeah. very very often um whole psychology is developed by uh by trying to find 
places. Well, it's a scientific method, isn't it? Find a place where it doesn't work. You know? Keep using something till it doesn't work. And then you've got something new. You've got to push it to the limit. Good, thank you. Okay. So I just want to, to um, tell you something about what I'm trying to do here with creativity. And uh, hopefully you'll be interested in this. If you're interested in creativity, we want to get unstuck and we want to get something better. And we always want something better. And we always think and hope that there is something better. And that's what's great about human beings. We're always pushing for something better. And as long as we believe there's something better, we can usually find it. If you don't believe there's something better, then of course you won't, because you won't look. That's the power of limiting mental models. So I got this idea about what I'm what I'm calling the creators club. So it's a it's a group, it's a community, membership community. And I want it to be, and it is a source of inspiration, resources, materials, people working together and encouraging each other and helping each other. So it's for entrepreneurs, coaches, writers, consultants, managers, therapists, trainers, or any combination where you deal in ideas and you want those to have impact. And I think more and more, you know, having talked a little bit about AI, and that isn't going to go away. In fact, that's going to get more and more. We need to tap into our creativity. We need good input. We need good feedback. We need encouragement. So the Creators Club is for people who want to do that, who want to be with other people, who want to create. I'll tell you a bit more of exactly what we do in a moment. Um, but it's not, of course, for anyone who is content to stay where they are, doesn't want to change, doesn't want to participate, or thinks creativity is important or doesn't work. And I don't think there's anyone here who thinks that, in fact, I don't think there's anyone anywhere who really thinks that. So we have resources, we have videos, there are courses, forums of discussion. Um, we have meetings, regular meetings. There's one um, improvisation group. If any of you have ever done, done improv, then you'll know how much fun that is. And improvisation is, is great fun and it's extremely creative. And it's the whole basis of teamwork because you're taking what other people say and you're adding to it in a, in a fun, creative way. So we have uh, regular meetings of improv. We have regular writers meetings, um, whether you're writing a book, whether you're writing blogs or, or emails or, or, or journals or, or articles or anything like that. I think one thing we all have in common is that we all write. And writing what we put up there for other people to read is one of the most important ways that we can represent ourselves out there, you know, on the internet. And so it becomes extremely important. It becomes very important to do it well and to represent yourself. So we're talking about creative writing. Creative writing is not just about writing um, fiction books. Forums, groups of people working. Um, creative groups. Um, and I think one of the most important things is just having you know a number of people there who share the same kind of mindset. It's really important because you, one can be discouraged if you're on your own, you're pushing day after day, and there's no one around to, to bounce ideas off or to encourage you. Um, it's where that encouragement part of that um, master mindset comes in so it's it's a a membership group on social media it's not a facebook group it's hosted um uh, on a website called mighty networks but that's the address you'll see up there i'm having a f 100 founder members we've got 50 so far and founder member is life membership and it costs 249 pounds which is about 300 us dollars and then if you don't want to do that there's an ordinary membership of 25 
pounds per month. And for ICC members, in other words, you guys, there's a 30% discount on membership and one month free. If you're interested as ICC members on that 30% discount and a free month, this is the address to go to. Members.thecreatorsclub.net. So make a note of that, take a screenshot if you're interested. That's the page for ICC discounts. If you are interested in Founder member, one off payment, a lifetime payment, only 100 places altogether. We've, we've filled 50 so far. Then this is the place to go. Join the creatorsclub.net. So, again, if you're interested in that, take a screenshot. I will put this up again at the end, but always good to have a screenshot or writing it down money back guarantee pay your money you go in you think no this isn't quite what i wanted then money back no no questions asked so those are the two addresses and if you'd like to have a chat with me about exactly what we do um, how we do it then the link at the bottom there is my scheduler so just click on that, you pick a time which suits you and uh, we can have a quick Zoom call and I can tell you more about it uh, on a one-to-one -one basis. So I'm gonna leave that up and then I think I've done pretty good timing here. Uh, we have five to 10 minutes for any questions or comments from any of you guys. So feel free to just type in something into uh, the Q&A box or into the chat box, which I will take a look at. Okay, thanks, Nivia. I hope it was uh, not only inspiring, but uh, also moved you to action. It's, uh, there's a story about uh, two Greek orators. Um, I, can't, I can't remember their names, but one of them, they said, oh, it's such a good orator, you know? Uh, and and when he talks, everybody goes, "Ah, oh, what an incredible speech! That was really, really wonderful." And then there was another orator. <laughs> when he finished speaking, everyone going, "Okay, let's march." In other words, let's let's move. Let's go do something. So I hope uh, today has been a mixture of both. <laughs> what will be the role or level of participation? Um, we're all creative. Um, yeah, we are all creative, and we can all be more creative. We, or we can all, not I don't know about be more, but uh, we can utilize it better. You know, we can we can do more with more input, with more feedback, with more ideas, with more support, and we can always do better. What you're doing already is great, and. If you look back in a year's time, you can think, wow, that was great. And look where I am now. Risk of having my ideas stolen. You can't, well, you can't, you can steal ideas if you like, um, but can you put them into action? Can you do something with them? Ideas, you know, you can take ideas, absolutely. Um, but can you do something with them? Can you make a difference with them? That's the question. I hope there's plenty of ideas here for you. And you're very welcome to borrow them, steal them, take them, uh, or purloin them, or any other verb you like. Um, I just hope you do something with them. Any other... Questions, comments? Chat box is open, questions are open.
if anybody wants to ask a question or make a comment uh just put your hand up i think i'll be able to see that and i can switch your mic on so okay don't see anything is creativity connected with brain plasticity absolutely um, brain plasticity means the ability of the brain to change itself in response to experience uh, and it changes itself by strengthening some connections and weakening other connections so that connections that are strengthened become habits of thinking or habits of action and the, the connections that are weakened we, we lose that we forget it or we, we go another way and so it's absolutely necessary yeah because that's the way we learn your brain will be slightly different uh, hopefully for the better at the end of this webinar from what it was at the beginning yeah we can creativity to develop a new habit to avoid the brain going into default mode yeah sure um it's i mean it's unlikely that anyone's going to be very creative all the time but uh it's like using a muscle you know you go to the gym you, you stay fit if you don't go to the gym for a long time you get flabby so in, in that sense exercising the create creative muscle doing something new um, engaging in debate all of those sorts of things stimulating different ideas inhibiting your habitual ideas doing something another way all of these things will strengthen that creativity muscle okay good well we're i was true to my word we are pretty much on time um, And I hope that if you enjoyed the presentation, that you will join the Creators Club, especially at the discounted price. And I'll see you there and we can be creative together. If you want to talk about it more, uh, then please do schedule a quick meeting with me. So I'm just going to. Uh, see the chat but i see that's pretty much all good okay okay so then i will we will stop